The Biden administration released a declassified intelligence report confirming what we already knew. That the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is the one who ordered the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi, who was a Washington Post columnist and a United States resident at the time. Now Trump tried to help MBS and the Saudi government cover up for this assassination, but the evidence was already too overwhelming and he really couldn't get that done. But there was an intelligence report that the Trump administration refused to declassify. And so the Biden administration did decide to declassify it, allowing the public to know once and for all that yes, it was Mohammed bin Salman who ordered the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi. However, however, the big question has been, well, what is Biden going to do to hold MBS accountable for, for what he did? And the answer is pretty much nothing. Um, Mohammed bin Salman will not have to deal with the United States implementing specific sanctions against him. There is no travel ban for, for Mohammed bin Salman to travel to the United States. So he's still free to travel to and fro. And also the only thing we know for sure is that 76 Saudis involved in, the, in harassing activists and journalists will be affected with visa restrictions. That was noted by Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. But he didn't announce measures to touch the crown prince, despite the fact that President Joe Biden promised to punish senior Saudi leaders while on the campaign trail. And real quick, Cenk, I do want to give you a statement from Jen Psaki, who is the White House press secretary. She was asked about this over the weekend, and here is her answer. Candidate Biden, you heard there, said he would hold Saudi Arabia accountable. Now that he's president, he's imposed no travel ban, no asset freeze, no criminal charges, and most importantly, no sanctions directly on the crown prince himself. Why not? Well, first, Anna, from the first day of the administration, we have been crystal clear at every level from the president on down, we're going to recalibrate this relationship and turn the page from the last four years. And that means ending our support for the war in Yemen, doing more to address the humanitarian crisis, and ensuring that we are holding to account the actions, the human rights abuses of this government by word and by action. The release of this report, which was held back over the last four years, is part of that, making that clear to the public. But we've also taken a number of steps through the Treasury Department, through the State Department, so to sanction the deputy head of intelligence, to sanction the revolutionary in, uh, forces in, in Saudi Arabia, and to make clear that we will never let this happen again. Yeah. So, Jenk, I want to get your thoughts because uh, Biden did pretend as if he was. Um, Furious with Trump for not holding MBS accountable, but it appears that he's basically following the same foreign policy move in in not wanting to upset the Saudis because there are some interests in working with the Saudis, which I'll get to in just a second. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, so understand that um, the Saudis have a lot of options in crown princes. Um, so first of all, they have hundreds of princes that could. Uh, be the crown prince, in other words, the uh, next in line to the throne. In fact, the Saudis have had six different crown princes in the last decade alone. And only one of them actually became king. Uh, two died, two were deposed. So there's plenty of precedent and plenty of options for the Saudis uh, to pick the next ruler. And this guy didn't just dismember a uh, Washington Post journalist. Uh, he kidnapped a foreign head of state. He kidnapped the prime minister of Lebanon. That's insane. I, that might be the most insane diplomatic move I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, let alone the trouble that he's starting in trying to very actively start a, a war with Iran. Uh, he, he split with uh, other allies like Qatar. That I don't mind, uh, but but it is destabilizing, right? So the guy is. Massive trouble. If the current king dies, he would become king for decade after decade, and there's nothing you could do about it. Whereas if the US puts pressure on now, they could pick one of hundreds of other princes, right? And so, what could we do? One, we could do something very simple. We could impose the same sanctions we imposed on the lower level people in, in the Saudi empire that were, took part in this assassination. So, we already did. Sanctions on like I think about 28 different people uh, for what happened. 
and and froze their assets and and uh, and did a travel ban. For Mohammed bin Salman, that's actually not that big a deal. I mean, he's not the brightest bulb, but if he hasn't taken most of his money outside of banks that America could touch with sanctions that might come, then he's a real knucklehead, and he has every, you know. I don't know that he's that stupid. So it's not like he's gonna lose all of his money. It would just hurt his ability to transact throughout the world and he couldn't come to America. Now, the real deal is we then say, we're not going to sell you any more military goods, if including planes, etc. If Mohammed bin Salman is the crown prince. Yeah, so Even then, in, we're not picking. We're just saying, look, yeah. that's our decision. The Saudis, you can make any decision you like. If you and and all they're using the military for at this point is bombing the innocent people of Yemen. So we don't want that to happen anyway. Biden claims and has taken some action towards not wanting that. So it it actually does not have that much downside. Saying that you're not willing to do that is saying no, the Saudis are more powerful than us. And there's one giant asterisk here. I'll get to in a second. Um, and yeah, and we're not going to even test them at all. We're not going to put any pressure on them because, and they could chop up anyone they like, because we care so much about the oil that we're going to let them chop people up. I'm I'm being honest. That's that's look. Trump said to Bob Woodward about Ben Solomon, "I saved his ass." That's true. Biden basically is now saying, "Me too." Yeah, you know, and also you have to put. Biden's decision in a bigger foreign policy context that that kind of explains how damaging his decision is here toward possible peace with Iran because Biden greenlit a a airstrike in Syria against an alleged Iranian backed militia as retaliation for you know what Iran allegedly did in targeting US troops in Iraq. And so in this case, what Biden is communicating to Saudi Arabia and Iran, remember Saudi Arabia and Iran are currently engaged in that proxy war in Yemen, is that Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia can literally order and execute the assassination of a US resident and a Washington Post columnist and not have to deal with any personal sanctions, nothing like it, no travel ban. But Iran retaliating against the United States for taking out its top general, well, we gotta teach them a lesson and we need to hit them by dropping bombs in Syria. I mean, what chance do we have at rejoining the Iran nuclear deal if this is the kind of messaging coming from the Biden administration? I mean, there are a lot of downsides for not doing something to hold Mohammed bin Salman accountable. Yeah, and one of our members asked a really good question. Meg asked, why did Biden even declassify this report if he wasn't gonna do anything about it? Because it's a classic Biden move, Meg. He he goes a quarter of the way and he goes mission accomplished. And in the old days that Biden is used to, the press would come in and give a standing ovation. They'd be like, "Oh my God, Joe Biden conquering hero!" You know, he he calls out Ben Salman for the murder, and ah, the crowd goes nuts. And they would never tell you, but he didn't actually do anything about it. Well, things have changed a little bit here, and here I'll give the press a lot of credit. And look, it was one of their own that got killed and dismembered. I hope that that's something that they care about, but. No matter what the reason is, they did a great job. And you don't hear me saying that often. And they said, no, no credit. <laughs> and so Biden played the usual Biden move and was surprised to find out that this quarter measure didn't work. I think he was genuinely taken aback by that. So now, how could you actually fix it? Like I said, don't sell weapons to them. The excuse they use is, well, then France or Russia would sell weapons to them. First, so what? Like it's not that big a deal for our national security if the French sell them weapons instead of us. It's a big deal to Biden's donors, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, etc. So let's keep it real. It's partly about the donors here. But then the second thing is, even if the Russians, oh no, sold weapons to the Saudis instead of us, and they made money instead of Lockheed Martin making money, um, well, the implicit promise is to defend Saudi Arabia from their 
enemies. And Russia is not making that promise and certainly France can't make that promise. So that brings you to the real reason why this decision was made. Yes, it was partly the oil. Yes, it was partly the defense contractors. But there's one other factor that I called the asterisk earlier. It said Israel is on the side of Saudi Arabia. And Israel also, and not all of Israel, but the right current right wing government led by Netanyahu definitely wants to start a war with Iran, but they do not want to fight that war. They want us to fight that war. The Saudis are the same exact thing. So this has got nothing new with religion. It's just that both the Saudis and the Israelis are led by massively right wing governments. And they both say, well, we want to start a war with our enemies, but neither one of us wants to fight it. So why don't we get those uh, you know, Americans who we basically own, and the Saudis have given so much money to all of our politicians, uh, and, and we'll just get them to start the war for us. Now, that's why you're seeing something, Saudis have a lot of power in Washington, right? But do they have this much power? Maybe not, but when you include the Israelis as well as the Saudis, it puts it over the top. And the Biden administration goes, no, 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 no. We promise we won't do anything. We promise we're still trying to, you know, we're we might or might not get back in that Iran deal. They can get back in that Iran deal today. They could just say the old deal, which Obama and Biden did, is now back in place. And Iran would say yes. So instead, they're not doing that, and they're playing footsies with World War Three. I'm keeping it real. That's what's happening, and they're doing it on behalf, in this case of a thuggish dictator, brutal murderer, Mohammed bin Salman. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.